September 4th, St. Rose of Viterbo. Almighty God did marvelous things in the soul of St. Rose of Viterbo. It appears that her parents gave her that name by divine inspiration, for it was symbolic of her entire life. As long as she lived, she bloomed like a sweet-scented rose in the garden of the church. Before she was able to speak, St. Rose attempted to pronounce the sweet names of Jesus and Mary, and as soon as she learned to walk, she asked to be taken to church. When St. Rose was only three years old, God showed how pleased he was with her in a most wonderful way. One of her maternal aunts died, and the family was standing around the coffin weeping aloud. Deeply moved by the sorrow of her relatives, little Rose went to the coffin, raised her eyes to heaven, and prayed silently. Then she placed her little hand on the body of her deceased aunt and called her by name. The dead woman immediately opened her eyes and reached out to embrace her little niece, who had raised her to life again. The child entertained a great compassion for the poor. She always tried to save some food to give to the poor. One day when she left the house with some bread in her apron, she met her father, who asked her in a curt fashion what she was carrying off now. The frightened girl opened her apron and fragrant roses were found in it. When she was seven, St. Rose of Viterbo retired to a little cell in her father's house. There she spent almost all her time in contemplation and in practicing rigorous penance. She prayed much for the conversion of sinners. Meanwhile, our dear Lord was preparing her for an extraordinary mission. St. Rose was not yet ten years old when the Blessed Mother of God instructed her to join the Third Order of St. Francis. Shortly after, our Lord appeared to her on the cross, wearing the crown of thorns on his head and bleeding profusely from all his wounds. St. Rose, aghast at the sight, called out, O oh my Lord, who has reduced thee to this state? Our Lord replied, my love, my deep love for men has done this. But, asked Rose, who has pierced and torn thee? The sins of men have done it, was our Lord's answer. Sin, sin, cried the saint, and she scourged herself to make atonement for the sins of the world. By divine inspiration, Rose then took a cross in her hand and went up and down the streets and public squares of her city, telling people of the terrible tortures of our Lord and the heinousness of sin. Every now and then she would emerge from her solitude to entreat the people to do penance. The town of Viterbo, which belonged to the Papal States, had revolted against the authority of the Pope. Disregard for religion and moral degradation were the order of the day. But the sermons of this little missionary had marvelous results. The people came in crowds to hear her. It is said that the stone on which she stood was seen to rise in the air and was there sustained by a miracle while burning words issued from her lips. Almost all the citizens had already resolved to do penance and to return to the legitimate papal alliance when St. Rose of Viterbo and her parents were exiled by the civil authorities. Some time later, the rightful authority of the Pope had been reestablished at Viterbo and Rose could return. She was now fifteen years old and anxious to enter the convent of the poor Clares. As she had no dowry, she could not be admitted. Well, said Rose, you will not receive me while I am alive, but you will receive me after I am dead. She and several companions repaired to a secluded dwelling where they intended to live as a community. The authorities, however, did not approve of the plan, and Rose returned home. She died two years later, fiddled with the joyous desire of being united with her God. Two and a half years after her death, she appeared three times to Pope Alexander IV, who was in Viterbo at the time, and told him to have her body removed to the convent of the poor Clares. When this was done, her body was found incorrupt, and it has remained in that condition to this day. Miracles are constantly occurring at her tomb. Pope Callistus III canonized her in the year 1457. Although her skin is dark, the body of the saint is still flexible and the internal organs in good condition. In 1921, the heart was removed to be placed in a reliquy for a procession, and it was found to be unblemished and perfectly intact at that time. Rose lived but seventeen years. She saved the church's cause and died a saint. We have lived perhaps much longer, and yet with what result? Every minute something can be done for God. Let us be up and going.